Hey everyone, this is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. I'm so excited for today's interview. We're talking to Forbes Riley. Hi, Forbes. Hello, my darling. How are you? I'm so happy to see you. I, I can give you a virtual hug in our little boxes over here. I know, here. I know. I've known Forbes for how many years? 10 years? We were both in diapers. Oh, wait, that was last week. <laughs> long, long time. And we've done uh, trainings together and I've recorded her. Stuff. She's just an amazing human being. So, Forbes will talk about who she is and why she knows what he's, she's talking about in just a second, but I'll give you kind of the Reader's Digest version, then we'll get into you. But basically, this woman has sold over $2.5 billion worth of consumer products on TV as a spokeswoman for HSN QVC in all sorts of ways, right? She has been in the camera uh, most of her life, I would say. Her dad was an inventor. She'll talk about all this, but essentially, she's like queen of consumer products and uh, e-commerce brands and all sorts of things. And so I asked her to come on this training. And again, I'm going to ask you who you are so we can go deeper, but um, to talk about what you would do if you had a consumer product brand, like where would you go with it? Like, would you do TV? What, where, what direction would you go? What advice would you give someone? Cause you've been doing this so long and I felt like you would just have such an inspiring story. And so anyways, for so great to see you. Why don't you tell us who you are, what, uh, why you know what you're talking about, and then we'll get into some of the questions and so forth about consumer products and what to do and, and all that good stuff. Well, I'm going to be here for an hour and a half telling you all that. So here's what you guys need to know, <laughs> is that I started my consumer product retail business on television before the internet started. So that tells you how old I am. Yeah, hello. Um, and I started with a, on a network that was just launching called, cable, called Fit TV on the Cable Health Club. And what that was, was a 24 hour network and people came on with their health and wellness products. That's a bit of my specialty. And this is before infomercials and before HSN and QVC started. And like, well, how do we sell products? So one of the reasons that Karen and I get along so well is that she likes box stores. I cannot stand box stores because then you have to go to the box. I prefer this box, the Zoom box. And now with the internet, I have a very fast way to make money doing anything that you want. Online is it. But I've been doing that forever. It started out looking a lot like television. And so in the old days, what people would do on Fit TVs, they would come with their product. I would create the physical pitch for the product. Because this is one of the things that my specialty is. How do you verbally promote a physical product so people just want it? And then doing it through a camera lens. That's all I've ever done. Well, so now TV is morphed into, in, you know, into infomercials, live home shopping, and now the internet. But for me, it's still a camera. And the biggest advice that I would give anyone who's got a, a physical product is, now there's guys, by the way, that, that uh, Karen will have on who are genius at internet marketing. You build a funnel, you stick it in there, and you can go to sleep and make money. My bent on that is actually perfecting the video inside a video sales letter, but how to be a product spokesperson. How do you make your product walk, talk, sing, dance, hoopla? This is why, I don't know if you noticed, but places like Sears and Macy's, and they're all going out of business. Because you as a human being have to, our customer, walk in, and you have to play the tape in your head. Do I want that outfit? Do I want that? We don't do that. And so what you want to do is you want to be able to pick up any product, whether it's a pen like this, whatever your product is, and I'm going to advise you to create a verbal pitch for it that you can do anywhere, that you can do as part of a Facebook ad, you can do as you're building your audience on YouTube or even on Facebook. But if you can make your product something that we want, now here's my biggest piece of advice. As you're doing that, stop telling people that we need your product. Nobody needs your product. Nobody does. In fact, you don't buy products that you need either. We only buy products that we want. So your job as somebody who has got a product is you need to create the want in your customer. And when you do that, so, I, so for example, Karen knows I have a fitness product, right? You don't even know what it is, but I'm going to tell you without even explaining it. I'm going to say, Karen, raise your arm like this. Pick your arm up. Pick your arm up. Yeah. Feel underneath here. Now, if that is wiggly jiggly at all, if I told you in five minutes, two times a day, this would tighten and tone that. You'd go, whoa. Now think about it, Karen, come on, bathing suit season is going to come up, New Year's Eve, you're going to wear a strappy dress. If your arms are not that tight, I know that's what you want. All of a sudden, like there's this burning desire brewing in her. I haven't told you that it's where it's made or who I am or what it does. I just want you to want it. And when you get someone in that state, which really becomes your job, and nowadays, every inventor should be able to talk about their product anytime, anywhere. And if you do it right, it results in people handing you money. I will tell you, hold on, I just want to backtrack into how you know all this, right? So you're on TV. I mean, you were doing stuff for whom? Like on TV, like give me some examples of stuff that okay, you so have. Jack I want Jack you to get a feel for how big this is because this is like a big deal. You are a big deal and, no, and, and you're kind of 
going on a different direction, but I want them to really feel it out, like why I love you so much and why it's so fun talking to you. Okay, so tell me. Well, number one, there's not, there's not a lot of women in this business. In fact, you can name all my male competitors, you can, or friends, but you can name, you know, Billy Mays and the Sham Wow guy. And, and you, know, you know a lot of men in that space, not a lot of women in that space. And I don't quite know why I'm so good at it. Maybe because I had a very awkward, goofy childhood. My dad was a magician and an inventor. I personally grew up as a very ugly little girl. I had a broken nose when I was a kid and braces and frizzy hair and I was overweight. And I was really smart, which you know what that made? A very lonely little girl who dreamed a lot. And my dad didn't help any. I mean, literally, we do magic tricks everywhere. And I lived in a very unique world. And so one day, as, and I just want to be an actress. I want to escape into somebody else's life. I did soap operas and movies, and you've seen me in a lot of your favorite television shows from 24 to The Practice to all, all kinds of shows. I'm still doing movies, by the way. I just did one last week for um, Hallmark called A Taste of Romance. Uh, mm -hmm. I got a couple on Netflix right now. Yeah, I still love that part of it. But I will tell you, it doesn't allow me to change people's lives the way products do. And in the very early days, Jake, a body by Jake, actually found me at an audition. Because back then, who knew what we were looking for? There was a pen sitting on a desk, and it said, sell me this pen into a camera lens. And I thought, this is a joke, right? All right. And by the way, I also hate that word selling. I don't like to be sold. I didn't grow up with any money. My dad spent three years in the hospital, so we were kind of poor. Anyway, I picked the pen up, and I said, hey, you know, it's funny thing about pens. When I went to college, I was only 16 years old when I got into college. I was very young. My mom used to write me longhand notes every day. I kept them like a stack, like two and a half inches thick. Mm -hmm. And I realized it's so cool that a pen like this can actually reach out and touch somebody's heart. Well, Jake, a body by Jake comes out of the dark, grab her, she's going to make me a lot of money. And the next thing you know, uh, th every, through two times a month, he would bring in a whole slew of inventors and people who had product. And he would go, okay, here, write the pitch for this. Write the, and then I would write the pitches and then we'd go on television and I would record them live to tape. Uh, in fact, you know, if you give me the hosting ability, I'll show you something really funny. It, it, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, in this case, that's what I love about YouTube is that I have everything up on YouTube and you can see this. It's actually a 30 year old piece of videotape, but it's like, wait a second. I sold 1500 different products. So there was nothing at some point that I hadn't seen. And that's all of a sudden infomercials started and I ended up hosting the first 15 infomercials. Well, that turned into the first 30 infomercials, which turned into a whole slew of awards. So if I can share right here, yeah, make me a co-host and I will share for you. Okay. And it's, it's very quick. How... Forbes, I have questions to ask you. No, no, no. It's very quick, but I think the visual will actually right, um, right, illuminate right. a lot for people. Exactly. I didn't know that you wanted to do this. So one second, sweetheart. Okay. Oh, you're so, you're, you're so funny. Okay. I'm going to make it very quick. So there's Forbes ready. Go to choo -choo -choo -choo. And when you take a look at this and you're like, wow. Can you, uh, can you show it? Because it's not allowing me to do any more than what I'm doing. Oh, no, 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 no. On Fitness Plus. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and today we've got a great product for you. Take a look at this. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and that's by popular demand, the best way to develop rock hard abdominals. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to Fitness Plus. Now, if you want to burn calories and tune your whole body all in the comfort and privacy of your own home, so I'm feeling my thighs work. I love that. The pads this close against the flywheel. Looking skin is Facial Magic's creator. At so if you're looking at here everything. You're looking at the bread man over here. You're looking at uh, teeth whitening. You're looking at all kind of different fitness products. Every single one of those, I not only created the pitch, but did that live on television. So way back then, we figured out that, ah, maybe selling through a person, through a spokesperson is a really good idea. And that has become my personal bent on how to make retail work. So you've sold how many products of other people's products and... Thousands. I've actually, I've grossed a little over two and a half billion dollars. My biggest infomercial was with Body by Jake. Remember the juicer? That was me. That ran in 80 countries uh, over eight years and literally grossed a billion dollars. And considering that I got a piece of the profits, I know that. Uh, Montel Williams, George Foreman. Um, the, literally, I've done 189 infomercials. I have three running right now. I have one on stem cells running right now. I just did one for a new kind of surface cleaner. Uh, right. Every health and I just I, wanted I them to hear all of that because that's really where I was coming from. I just wanted them to understand she never stops this woman. I mean, you know, when I saw you, like, uh, you know, I, I've known you for a long time, but there was even a period where you just started selling that product with arms. And yeah, I mean, this girl stopped everybody at a restaurant and made everybody, I mean, she gets involved. She's so excitable about what she does. So, okay. So I have squeezed out the gold. You guys understand who she is and what she's doing. And now I really 
let's talk about what will you what would you do with consumer products? I mean, there's so many ways you could go today. Give me give me a pro- give me a product. Pick a product. All right. Uh, let's what do a. Um, let's see. Uh, you threw me on the spot here. Okay. Yeah, I know. Okay. Let's do a supplement. So there's a lot of people with supplements. You know what I mean? Like food products. Supplements, okay. So for supplement, like come here. One of the first things that you want to do is you want to hire somebody who looks like my fiance. Josh, come here for a second. Have a seat. He's going off to the gym, but he's a quick little appearance. Say hi to Karen. You want to hire somebody who looks like this. Have a seat. And you want to say, okay. So how do you look like this? How do you? Hi, Karen. So hi. number one, do you spin gym? You like I do it? it all the time. I don't stop. What do you love about it? Oh, I can do it anywhere. <laughs> <You're great. laughs> I love you. Right so that's the first thing you want to do. You want to have a really good looking guy in your house. Um, but actually, oh so one is you got to create the story. This is the best interview of all time. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> if we had longer, you would have taken his shirt off. Uh, that's how I get a lot of my clients. Uh, and then one time he came out of the back door completely naked. He didn't realize I was on camera. That interview went through the roof. Oh, but anyway, okay. let's back to, back to, um, products. So let's talk about supplements. Number one, you got to start with your story. Mm-hmm. What is the supplement? Because there's a lot of them out there. For me, okay. it's always about differential. There's a couple of brands that I have worked with. I work with Urban Naturals. I mean, I work with a couple of brands that your goal is to set yourself apart, figure out what it is that you want and why you're doing it. I mean, there's a big difference between somebody who says, oh, I'm just going to private label stuff and just throw it out there. That's not my kind of entrepreneur, to be really honest. I like entrepreneurs who have a lot of heart. Karen is right. If you stop me anywhere, I, my spin gym is my fitness product. I still, 12 years later, freaking love this thing so much. I've sold 64,000 of them on, in a 24-hour period on HSN. I got a check for $1.4 million. I will still get off an airplane, and you've seen me do it. Somebody's running to the ATM machine, they hand me 40 bucks. Why? Because I love it. Now, there's two kind of entrepreneurs. There's one who just make a lot of money. That's what they love to do. Then there's people like me, or, and a lot of people like me, who just love their product. Neither one is right or wrong. I got to tell you, sometimes if you love your product too much, shame on you, but I do. I fall in love with my products, but that's my path in life. You know, part of it is number one, figure out what it is that you want. Want to make a lot of money? Easy. You can even be affiliate market. You don't even need your own product. But if you're silly enough, like maybe you and I are, that says, I want to go manufacture and make this somewhere. I have to own it. I mean, this is my girlfriend. She just created this whole line of scarves for me. It says, stop playing small. There's a lot of work in just the product building side. Then there's the entire marketing side. Totally. You have to decide which one turns you on. I'll make a piece of advice. Don't ride both horses. If you actually build your product, you are not the marketer. If you're the marketer, you didn't actually build your product. Very rarely does that come together so synergistically. And also getting classes like from Karen and myself and people who have done this. Yes, you need to know all those things from trademark to patent to all of the things, inventory. It goes on and on and on. So I'm a person who loves the product. I also love the why is the product. So again, I'm going to say to you a supplement. So Karen, I've got this new energy powder, COVID-19. You've been sitting inside, right? This, this product combines vitamin D naturally, which you only get out in the sun, a little bit of, you know, thermogenic kind of energy. You're going to burn fat. You're going to feel good. And you don't get the jitters. Something you want, Karen? Yes or no? That's what I want. Of course want. it is. Right. Of course, that's what you want. Then you got a label on it. But all of a sudden, you got a spokesperson who got her to say yes out of a whole field of other supplements. So again, I would be very specific. I would create the brand. What does your brand stand for? And then do all the branding homework. Do the colors, the mission, the vision, all of the things that make a company a company. And then you'll sustain. I mean, I've been doing this for almost 40 years. 30 years? I'm older than I look. (laughs) So, I mean, really what you're saying is don't just be one of those product entrepreneurs who don't really care about what they do. Actually pick something that you're going to get excited about, focus on it, and then create a brand around it um, with the excitement, right, and the coloring and all the strategies around that, and that matters more than the consumer product itself. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, you know what, and again, there are people who come on your show and they'll have exact opposites, and we're both millionaires. So the point is, you just got to pick the boat that you want to ride. You know, is a Ferrari better than a Maserati? Pfft, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. They're both great cars. Pick one that you like. Mm. If you're going to go down my road, uh, you're going to have a product spokesperson. You're going to have somebody who can talk about your product, who can leverage other people's platforms, who can go on summits, who can go on morning shows. And, and I love that whole arena. I love you very much. Uh, keys are in, the, in my pocketbook. Uh, maybe I'm in the middle of a show. <laughs> it's hard to tell you. Um, hang on one second. Just put, it, just put my bag in the car and go. <laughs> um, that's one of the things about having your office at home is that the kids and the dog and the, everybody wants to every, your attention at all times. You have to figure out how to segregate that. But I'm a true believer. Seriously, Forbes, you cracked me up. (laughs) 
to all of the people watching this right now, I just want you to know that was not rehearsed. Joshua, Joshua, no. come here. You get, okay, you're in the middle of my show. You can't be looking in my bag. Oh, you know what? Did you find it? All right, so he's stuck and he wants to go to the gym. Isn't that interesting? Um, I'm gonna ask, can you pause for a second? Because no, because I need to help the poor, because you know men, as cute as he is, they're still men. All right. So Forbes, um, in terms of the supplement, I'm just trying to understand, like, so you can say be a spokesperson and say all these things, but do you actually mean hiring somebody? Or are you talking about them learning how to articulate and be who they are supposed to be? Does that make sense? Okay. Like, I'm just trying to clarify for people because it's very easy to say, say the right things about your product, but what does that actually mean to somebody? And like, how do they do that? Okay. So they call me the queen of pitch. Karen, and I, that's what I've been doing during COVID. I've actually been teaching this because I think how you communicate with yourself and other people, if you can pitch, not sell, whatever it is that you're doing, you win. In today's world, I think it's about personalities. Anybody can sell supplements. I think the one that's got the, 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 the interesting brand, why do you think Oprah can sell anything? Because she is the brand. Um, and there is an art to pitching, but it's not something that you, you don't have to be that talented. You just have to understand it. And here, you want, here I'll, give you, I'll give you some secrets. Earlier, we talked about creating a want. So number one, when you've got a product, don't tell us what it is. We're not interested in your product. We don't even know you yet. The smartest thing that you can do, and this is a big piece of advice for infomercial land, is to create a problem. Why do I want your product? What, and these are things I think everyone who creates a product really needs to think about. See, you know what pisses me off is that my dad died having not sold his inventions. A lot of them were wacky and nobody wanted them. So don't create things that people don't want. So once you've got your product, you have to go, hmm, so here, here's a product, right? It's a fork. I could tell you that it's made out of steel, if it's ergonomically, I don't care about any of that. I gotta tell you, in some countries we eat with our hands, it gets very messy and dirt gets under your fingernails. I have this thing that will allow you to pick up food and gently put it into your mouth. Might that be interesting? Yeah. All of a sudden you're saying yes and you, oh, I solved a problem. Okay, that's cool. Now I might solve a problem that says, you know what, this is a, a germ-free kills itself made out of some kind of steel that never has any kind of germs. So you can even share a fork and, and no one ever gets sick. Oh, you solved another problem. Create the problem and stop people in their tracks. I think this is what we did really good in infomercials. Remember infomercials would air in the middle of the night. You're doing something else and you'd stop and go, well, I have to watch that. And then we would keep your attention. Well, that's what I want you to do. Whether you're pitching a big box retail buyer let me tell you something. You walk in just because you got your handy dead little product. They don't really need you or care about you. They've seen everything. What is it about you? Well, you're going to solve their problem. Oh, this is, this is what people are looking for now. I've done the research that makes this, ooh, or I've already tested this and people are flying off the shelves. Then now you're solving their problem. Then you solve the consumer's problem and all of a sudden you've got, this is that, oh, wow. Then you talk about the product. The biggest problem I have when people pitch too soon, you're pitching to a closed door you don't realize it, why it doesn't work and you leave going, oh, I must be a horrible person or my product sucks. No, you didn't set the stage so they are hungry and ready to hear what you have to say. And so I am very clear about this pitching thing. In the same vein, Karen, is you pitch about everything. If you're going to ask somebody to marry you, if you pitch at the wrong time, they're going to say no. And so this is an art. In fact, here's, here's one of the skills. How to create in somebody else what you want them to say. So Karen, a little bit of magic trick here. And there's something here, I made a prediction. If I said to you, I went to a business training a couple of weeks ago, while I was there over the weekend, I lost six pounds. What's the first question you wanna ask me? Why, how did you lose six pounds? How, how did you do it? Right, but I know that. I already knew the answer before I asked you the question. What if I said, hey, Karen, you wanna see something cool? Sure, yes. Right, you're gonna say yes. So I already know what my, person, my customer is going to say, even if I don't see them, that's what I've done through a camera lens. You have to take a step back from your product and organize. How do people want this thing that you created? So I don't care about all the other things. Karen's got classes for everything else. Once you've created it and it's here and it's a living, breathing little thing, mm -hmm. who wants it and why? And if you can serve their needs, it will fly off the shelf. I think that's amazing and it's, it's actually really smart. So what you do essentially is when you're talking, I mean, because people have to do videos and they have to create things to explain their product and so forth. So you're essentially a spokesperson within your own business anyhow, if you are going to actually go the social media route, which pretty much everybody kind of has to, you kind of have to create things. So when you're creating, say videos, create questions that you know that people will want to know the answers to and you start with the exciting parts and then build into the features and functionalities of the product and stuff like that. Is that, is that how you I think, 
that's how you know interview you maybe i mean that could work as well right uh, yes and i yeah. i do think by the way i think in today's day and age everyone has to be you either have to be your own product spokesperson or hire or have someone in your world that does that for you because that's what everyone is doing you know even when you watch a youtube video think about it why would you make a video that nobody wants to watch I've talked to a lot of influencers and they really seem to understand the psychology about the people who are watching it before they make it. And they're feeding that pipeline. I find with inventors too often, they invent something they know sometimes people don't actually even need or want. In which case, then we go and create the need or want. And I'll tell you why that's true. I don't always get it right. I get to pick and choose. People come to me all the time and I say, yes, I want to work with you. And no, I don't want to work with you. I passed on the Chia Pet. I passed on the Snuggie. I didn't know that people needed to actually reach through their blanket to get their tea in the middle of the... Sometimes you're wrong, but I will tell you what, think about what Snuggie did. Stupidest product in the world, hundred million dollars, but they told you, Hey, when you're cuddled up and you're watching TV and it's cold, you don't want to, Oh, the blanket fell off. You want to go right through the blanket. To get... I didn't know I had a problem like that, but now I do. It's amazing. It's pretty clever. It is clever. And by the way, I mean, one of the questions people ask me all the time is Karen, what do you think of my product? Do you think it's going to sell? Do you think it's going to do well? because I'm, you know, in their world, I, I'm an expert in, in product, you know, and so forth. And, and to be honest with you, what I always tell people is don't listen to anybody because sometimes the, like, haven't you noticed that some, you never know some products because you personally believe wasn't going to work. I'm just kind of going on a tangent, but um, you know, like in your mind, Forbes, even though you've done so well, like sometimes you just don't know with consumer products. So part of it is being out there and testing and trialing and committing and going for it and not quitting versus the actual product itself. I mean, do you kind of, you get what I'm saying about that Forbes? Well, I have a philosophy about that. Yeah. So I am a certain age and a certain demographic and so are you. When people come to me, usually they're asking me to present their product on an infomercial or home shopping, in which case I can say whether it's going to work for me because I am my market. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of things that I would never buy. And so, no, I never tell somebody it's a bad product because again, Chia Pet and Snuggie are out there, but here's what you do want to do. It's not one person. I, by the way, tested this thousands of times. Go out to the mall, go out to the beach, wherever it is and stand there and set up a little table going, Hey, would you try this? Tell me what you think. Would you try this? Tell me what you think. A hundred times, you're not asking your mother, your best friend, or anybody that you know, because out of a hundred people, take the data and be honest with yourself. Did they, and don't kind of make them say an answer you like. Did they like it? Was it interesting? Would they pay for it? How much would they pay for it? Would they recommend it? After a hundred strangers look at your product, then you get to go, huh, I got something nobody wants here. I don't care how much you're going to tell us. You want. No. But if half of the people go, ooh, maybe I need to tweak something, but that I test market every single thing I've ever tried. You're actually on the street with your product oh, yeah. on a table. Oh, absolutely. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll go out to my kids. I'll, you know what? I'll go when my kids are doing baseball. I would sit and I'm honestly giving it to, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What would you try? Where would you? I, because I don't know if it's not my category. How would I know that you want a certain kind of switchblade on a knife or you want an airsoft shotgun that my son's got or a silly band? I thought silly bands were stupid. I went, my kids were six years old. Let me tell you something. Every kid grabbed them like, ah, oh, we're investing in silly bands. Not what I wanted, but I wasn't the customer. 